Hello and welcome back. It's great to see all of you again today. When friends and family come to see me at my home, they ring the doorbell and I go to the doorbell and I say, there you are, come on in. So today I'm saying to you, our Help the Journey community friends, there you are. We've been looking forward to seeing you today all week long. Glad you're here. Today we have another lesson called no thanks, I'm sweet enough. Some fun exercises to do with you and we're gonna share two new recipes. I especially wanted to do this particular class because true confession, I have a sweet tooth. Give me a thumbs up out there if anybody else understands that. Oh yeah, I see thumbs up popping up all over the monitor. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's a very common problem. Last week, we talked about choices that we have every day that can lead us to better health. Today, we're going to talk about added sugar, added sugar in the foods we eat, added sugar in the drinks we drink, and how it's presented on the new food label. Now would be a great time for you to take out the items that we sent you for today's class. So the items that you'll need for today's class are your booklet for session two, and in that booklet will be your recipe printed inside it for the first recipe that we do, and then there's the recipe card for the second recipe. So you'll need that booklet. You'll also need a little zip baggie of product cards that was sent to you. You will need the pink baggie of cotton balls that you received. And I know you looked at that and said, why would they send to me these? You're almost ready to find out, just a few minutes. Um, and the other thing that we sent you for this week is your new water bottle. Have any of you been using it yet? If you have, give me a thumbs up out there so we can know. Ooh, the screen's lighting up again. There you go. Well, we're excited about that because staying hydrated is really important to your health. And we hope you enjoy this water bottle. It's one of my favorites. So most of us eat and drink more added sugar than is recommended for our health. Research has shown that people who consume higher amounts of added sugar, um, especially from sugar sweetened beverages, tend to gain more weight, have a higher risk of getting type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and high blood cholesterol. From other research, we learned that people drinking just one to two sugary beverages a day have a 26% greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes than those who never drink sugar sweetened beverages. Hmm. Now that I've mentioned those risks, what comes to mind when I say sugar sweetened beverages? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a concern, it is. But you know, the good news is that we do have a choice. Using information that we're gonna discuss in class today, you can choose fewer sugar-sweetened beverages and foods, and this can lead to a better eating. But before we jump into talking about learning about added sugar, let's spend a few minutes finding out what happened over the last week. Based on the goal that you set last week, what is the one thing that you or you and your family did differently? And you know, you can choose to share um, maybe a time you and your family also made a healthy choice since last session. And if you remember to have with you um, the food label or snapped a picture of a food label that was interesting to you or a box when you were in the grocery store, please unmute yourself so that we can share, so you can share that now. And then I also want to ask you for this sharing time together, a few questions to think about. <clears throat> and you can share your answers with the group. And as always, your participation is voice by choice, so you don't have to speak up. Um, but I hope that you'll feel comfortable to do that. But just know that you can also use the chat box if that's more comfortable for you. So the two questions I'd like you to consider are, uh, the first one is, I struggle with making good food decisions when, 
And for me, that would be when I go out to eat. I find it's a great challenge when I'm going out to find something that's not loaded with sugar or salt or, you know, I don't know what oils they cooked it in. I don't know how healthy it is. So um, it, that is a challenge for me. So that would be my challenge. And then the second question to consider is, I am really proud that this week I was able to, so something that you're proud of, an achievement that you made. For me, um, I'll just share that I started more regularly using the MyFitnessPal app, the free version. I'm not paying for it at all. And I'm loving the service that I'm getting for it. It's giving me great information and feedback um, on how I'm doing. And not only am I logging my food now, but I'm also logging my exercises. And so it, it, it keeps me um, accountable. <laughs> so it's, it's, very, it's been very good for me in that respect. So I'd love to hear from you now. Um, who would like to comment first? Awesome. Thank you for sharing and thank you all for participating. Everybody got in on that. And that's what we want. You know, this is our health community where we support each other because we all learn from each other. So thank you all. Now we're on to our topic of the day, added sugar. Did you know that 200 years ago, the average American ate only two pounds of added sugar in a whole year? Hmm. So now I'm going to give you a sentence and it's sort of a fill in the blank sentence and feel free to unmute yourself and chat back about this what your guess might be to fill in the blank. Today, the average American eats almost blank pounds of added sugar in a year. What are your guesses on that? Okay, those are great guesses. Well, now let me share with you that it's 54 pounds, 54 pounds of added sugar. If you break that down to a daily amount, it looks like this. This is 17 teaspoons of sugar. We're not talking about natural sugars occurring in food. We're talking about added. Somebody added this sugar. That's a lot. And when I look at that, I think, I know I'm not the one adding that much sugar. Where, where is this sugar coming from? So we're going to learn about where sugar sneaks into our food and our drinks. And the more you know, the better choices that you can make for yourself and your family. Sugars in what we eat can be, like I mentioned, added or naturally occurring. Added sugars are sugars used in processing foods or for beverages um, that, we, that we add the, the sugar to. Let's think about that for a minute. What are some examples of foods that already have sugar in them when you buy them? Right, right. Candies, cookies, cakes, baked goods, drinks made with sugar, cereal, pudding, sauces like ketchup, barbecue, barbecue sauce, salad dressing, things you wouldn't necessarily think about having sugar in them. All of those have added sugar. And those were great answers. Thank you all for sharing. I love this group because you're so interactive. How about an example of when you might add sugar to a food or beverage yourself? Right, the coffee is always the first one that comes up. Any others? Tea, Kool-Aid, um, adding cereal to um, sugar to your cereal, and, and syrup to pancakes. That was going to be the one I would bring up if nobody mentioned it. Yep, that's a big one. I used to really enjoy that, and I still enjoy it. I just enjoy less of the sugar when I have it. Okay, well now I want to give you three categories, and from these three categories, which um, rank them like first, second, and third, which of them do you think uh, Americans get more added sugar from? Is it number one, snacks and sweets, number two, beverages, or three, if it's just other miscellaneous foods? Okay, I'm getting kind of a tie there on snacks and sweets and beverages. Um, and thank you for your answers. Actually, Americans get more added sugar from what we drink. 47%, a whopping 47%, or half of the added sugar we get is from beverages. That's, that's incredible to me. 
And the next biggest place we get added sugar is snacks and sweets. Americans drink more added sugar than we eat in snacks and sweets. That's incredible, isn't it? And you know what? Our bodies don't need any added sugar at all, zero. In fact, when we fill up on empty sugar calories, especially kids, we often are too full to eat nutritious foods. So to learn just how much sugar is added to some foods, we're going to do an activity called Show Me the Sugar. So please take out those food and beverage cards that we sent to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not everyone has the same set of cards, so we're going to be covering several examples of added sugars. And then now is the time to get out that big bag of cotton ball, and we're going to pretend that they are sugar cubes. So we've given you, you these cotton balls so you can have a visual idea of the amount of added sugars in the examples we're going to show you. So each cotton ball is going to represent the same amount as one sugar cube, which is what we'd be using if we were in class together. So to, to give you an example of how this activity works, we're going to do a, a card that none of you received. It's a fruity yogurt. It's one cup, just a one cup serving of fruity yogurt. And I'd like for you to share with me how many cotton balls of sugar do you think is in this particular food? Okay, the guess is three is um, the guess is three. All right. The actual number of grams of sugar is 26, which translates to 10 sugar cubes. And one more is 10. So 10 sugar cubes of sugar in that one, one cup serving of yogurt. Does that surprise anyone? Does that make anybody a little aggravated? I was when I first learned that. I, I just, I was surprised. I thought that was a health food. And it is, if it's low fat plenty. So take a look now at each of your cards and guess how much added sugar is in each food or beverage item that you have a card for. So once you've made your guesses, Stack the corresponding number of cotton balls on top of the card that you have. And I'm going to give you just a few minutes to make your guesses. And then I'm going to be asking you how many grams of sugar or cotton balls you thought were in each product. So in just, and while you're getting that together, in case you're interested, each sugar cube is equal to just over a half teaspoon of sugar or 2.4 grams. Um, the reason we're doing this activity with grams is because the food labels will use grams to display information for each product. Everybody looks like they're ready. That's awesome. Are you ready? Okay, thumbs up from everybody. I'm excited to hear your guesses. Who would like to start? Okay, this is our first guess. So it's a juice flavored drink. It's a 16 ounce bottle. Um, here we go. So the question is, how much sugar is in that? All right, I'm getting a guess of 11. That's a lot of sugar there. All right, let's see how much is actually in this bottle. So for 16 ounces, we have 54 grams of added sugar, which equals 22 sugar cubes. How about that? Did anybody have an idea that there would be that much sugar in there? Hmm. So that we had 11, so we're going to have to double that. 12, 13, 15. And one more makes 22. Look at that. How about that? What a great visual on how much sugar is in products. All right, who would like to be the next product? Okay, so the next, the next product is actually a food, it's barbecue sauce. And I was so sad when I learned this because I love barbecue sauce. So what is a guess for how much sugar is in barbecue sauce? 
Okay. One, the guess is one. All right. So let's see. In two tablespoons, and we're talking about just this much, twice over. So let's see how much sugar. It's five sugar cubes in, in just two tablespoons. So it's this much sugar for the barbecue sauce. There we go. All right. Now our next product is an energy drink. Now in this energy drink, it's a 16 ounce can size. So how much sugar would anybody like to guess? Does anybody drink this product? Okay. So would you like to guess on how much it might be? Okay, six, six cotton balls, all right? So let's see, the guess is six for a 16 ounce can. It's actually 54 grams of added sugar or 22 sugar cubes. All right, one more, 22 sugar cubes. That is a lot of sugar in one drink, isn't it? It's incredible. How do y'all like this game? It's pretty eye-opening, isn't it? All right. Our next product is a frozen coffee drink. So this is a 12 ounce cup, which really isn't that big. So in this 12 ounce cup, how many sugar cotton balls do you think are in it? Eight, okay, let's see. One, two, three, four. Eight, here we go. So this is our guess. Let's see how much actual sugar is in there. So it's 49 grams of added sugar and 20 sugar cubes. How about that? Does anybody purchase a frozen coffee drink like this? Is this a couple of people? It, it's, it was very surprising to me. How many more guesses do we have? Okay. A couple more people want to play. So in this particular product, we have a 20 ounce bottle of orange soda. So let's, let's see what your guess might be. What do y'all think? How much sugar is in this one 20 ounce bottle? Ten? All right. Seven, nine, and ten. All right. This is the guess. Now let's see what the actual number of sugar is. Seventy-three grams of added sugar. Twenty-nine sugar cubes. Twenty-nine. Add some more sugar cubes. All right, just a few more. There we go. Look at this. Isn't that incredible that this much sugar could be in one drink that you'd be drinking? All right, and we have one more. Now this particular drink is 100% orange juice. It's a 12 ounce bottle. What are our guesses for this product?
Right, okay. Well, I have six, so we'll, we'll go with that. One more to make six. There we go. So the guess is six. So let's look and see exactly how much sugar is in this product. It has zero grams of added sugar, so zero sugar cubes. And you may ask, well, why is that? Um, this, this is natural sugar that we're talking about, not added sugar. Wasn't that an interesting, um, an interesting activity to do to make you just really think? It was for me. I, I um, kind of innocently just trusted all the product makers to give me the, the correct and best product for myself. So I would like to, at this time, go over the rest of the product uh, so that, because you each have, there's three different sets of cards out there that you different people receive. So I want to go through this page by page so that you can make corrections on the cards in front of you on how much actual sugar is in that card or, or in that product. So the first one is water. Water is zero added sugar, um, zero, zero sugar cubes in it. So water is an awesome drink, no sugar added. And a canned soda has 39 grams of added sugar. Look at this, 16, 16 of our sugar balls. We talked about the soda, the sports bottle, 53 grams of added sugar, 21 sugar cubes. Look at that. We talked about the energy drink. Sweet tea, it, and this is a 23 ounce can, 69 grams of added sugar or 28 sugar cubes. We did the juice drink. How about this product? It's a 20 ounce bottle of vitamin added water. Sounds healthy enough, doesn't it? Has water in it, has vitamins in it. But it actually has 31 grams of added sugar and that equals to 12 sugar cubes. This product is lemonade. A 12 ounce bottle has 40 grams of added sugar and 16 sugar cubes. Hmm. And we talked about the orange juice. Low fat unflavored milk, an eight ounce carton um, has zero added sugar. But if you choose the low fat chocolate milk, same size, you get 10 grams of added sugar or four sugar cubes. So the juice pouch we didn't talk about yet, six ounce pouch is eight grams of added sugar or three sugar cubes. How about that? Tell me, uh, did anybody have any surprises in that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing when you just look at all the sugar that's in the products that we buy. So which one of the products that we saw was lowest in added sugars? Right, the orange juice, which we discussed, and we'll talk about that again in just a second. Um, the water and the unflavored milk, all great products, low in sugar. Um, so just remember that when you're when you're buying juices, that 100% juice is still high in sugar and therefore should be consumed only in small amounts, if at all. Um, it's really always better to eat your fruit than to drink it. So now I want to show you uh, this, this, another part of the flip book, and you can look in your take home booklet and just flip it up into the and you'll see this page right in front of you. So on this page, it's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Nutrition Facts label. And what we have now is that the Nutrition Facts label is in the process of change. It isn't finalized yet. So what you're going to see when you're looking at products is some of them will have changed to the new label and some have not yet. 
So to help us be educated consumers, we're going to talk about those. So if you look on uh, on the side by side in the on the old label, it says sugars one gram and it's sugars plural. And on this side, it's total sugars 12 grams and then includes 10 grams of added sugars to make that 20%. Now let's look at a juice type drink. How much of this 20 ounce juice bottle would you drink at a time? Okay, I see somebody's chatting in, they would drink the whole bottle and somebody else chatted in that they would probably drink half of it. Okay, well, the label actually lists 122 calories, but if you were to drink this whole bottle, you would take in 305 calories. And that's a lot more. That's a big difference. Um, it's a lot more because this, if you look at a little closer, it says serving size eight fluid ounces, servings per container 2.5. So it's two and a half servings inside this bottle. This label doesn't tell us how much of the sugar is from added sugars. So we have to find that out for ourselves. So where would you look to find out what sugars are in this bottle? Right, somebody texts in, down in the ingredient list, that's right. So in this juice drink, you'll see it highlighted that high fructose corn syrup is the added sugar. Ingredients are listed in the ingredient list by the weight. So the first three ingredients make up most of what is in this package. In your take home booklet, there is a page called Cut Down on Added Sugar, and it lists the names for added sugar. That starts on page 14 and it goes through page 18. It's great reading, um, but if you'll just uh, maybe do that at a later time, I think you'll enjoy it and learn a lot too. Now, here's another nutrition facts label it has per serving and per container facts side by side. This is another positive change to look for on a new label, is that for foods and beverages that will likely be, likely be consumed at one time, information for both a single serving and a whole container are going to be listed side by side. So this is great for us because we don't have to do the math and it gives us more information to make better choices. So if you look here, per serving 220, per container 440. I personally really like the new nutrition label. How about y'all, what do you think? You like it? I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up out there and good comments in the chat box. That's awesome, that's awesome. Okay, well now it's time for a fitness break. We're gonna change it up a bit here. And we're going to turn the cameras on to Lena and Tori as they warm up. And while they're warming up, I would like for you guys to find a chair that is a really good chair that will be stationary. You don't need a chair that's going to slide or roll on you. You need one you're going to be able to depend upon. So look for a chair like that. We're going to give you a few minutes to do that. And then when you get it, come back and join uh, Tori and Lena as they're stretching so you can get all stretched out and be ready to. Um, and then for the next 15 minutes, we're going to practice some exercises you can do in your home using just a chair. This is a fun, easy way to add more movement to your day. And these exercises are designed so that everyone should be able to join in. But of course, participate at the level that is right for you. Okay, I see everybody's ready and all, everybody's stretching out there. Good for you, good for you. All right, double check your chairs to make sure they're not gonna slide on whatever floor you're working with. And know that Tori is going to be doing the exercises as I describe them. 
and Lena's going to be doing the exercises in a modified way. Okay, so we, the, the first set of exercises is going to be for the leg. So if you'll have a seat in your chair, make a big, strong, tall back, sit upright, and what we're going to do is extend one leg and lift that leg. The, the goal eventually is 15 times, but we're going to do it only four times. So we will always start on the left and go to the right. So starting with your left leg, lift your left leg. And this is not lift your knee, it's just lift your leg, bring your foot up and down. That'll be one and up and down. That's two. Up and down. That's three. One more time. Up and down. Down. And that's awesome. That's four. So now we'll do, and each of the exercises we're doing, we're going to do left to right. So it'll be easy to follow. Now for the right leg, right foot up and down. For two, right leg up and down. For three, right leg up and down. Right leg up. And down. Awesome. You guys are doing so great. Everybody's participating. So now from the same seated position, sit upright and lift one leg and we'll start again with the left while keeping it in a bent position. So essentially you're lifting your knee. So you just bring that foot straight up off the floor and keep the other foot flat on the floor. So left leg up and down. Two up and down. Three, up and down. Four, up and down. Awesome, awesome. Now let's do the right leg. Right leg up and down. Right leg up and down. Right leg up and down. Last time, up and down. Super. Now, what we're gonna do, still sitting in the chair, is from a seated position, lean forward slowly, keeping both feet on the floor. From this position, press through both legs and arms to a standing position. And then we're gonna sit back down in the chair slowly. Slowly is the trick. Uh, and we're, the goal for this exercise is 10 times, but today we're only gonna do four. So up for one, slowly. And down slowly, that's one. Up again for two, slowly. And down slowly, good job. Up again for three. And down slowly. And here we come for our last one. Up and down. Awesome, awesome. Now those are the exercises for the, the leg. Now we're going to do the upper body. So from a seated position, sit upright and extend your arms by your side with your hands facing away from you. Then lift your hands up towards your shoulders, bending, your, bending at your elbows. The goal is 15 times eventually, but right now we're going to do four. We're going to do both arms at the same time. And I want to mention that Tori is also holding two cans of, of different products. They're about a pound each. So we're trying to illustrate that you don't have to go out and buy a lot of fancy exercise equipment. You can just use something that you have around the house. So are we ready, everybody? Let's put our arms down. And here we go. Up for one. And down. Up for two and down, up for three, and down, up for four, and down. That's great, everybody's doing these. This is so exciting. So now from a seated position, we're gonna lift our arms and our elbows in front of our chest, and we're gonna touch our fists together. It's the flat side of your fists that you're bringing together. The tricky part for me on this is keeping those elbows up. Keep those elbows up. And then what we're gonna do is separate those fists and bring the arms back and press those shoulders together. 
however far works for you. All right, so get ready. One and back, elbows up. Two and back, elbows up. Three and back, elbows up. Four and back, elbows up. Oh, you guys are awesome. Everybody's doing such a great job. <laughs> All right, so now from a standing position, so you're gonna need to stand up, face your chair, and you're gonna take hold of the chair with one arm and whichever arm you choose to take hold of the chair with, that's the, that's the knee that's gonna go up in the chair. All right? Okay, so then from this position, you're gonna to wanna to put your fist at your waist and your arm doesn't stick out at the side like a, like a, like a chicken wing. It goes back, it's not like that, up that. There you go, thank you Tori for illustrating that. It goes back, okay? And then you're gonna take that arm and your arm is just gonna bend at the elbow. That's gonna be the only thing that moves and go back. And then when you go back, you're gonna squeeze the muscle in your arm, the back muscle. Give it a good squeeze as you go back. That's good. Now everybody, let's start at our waist. One and back, squeeze. Back to our waist. Two and back, squeeze. And waist. Number three, here we go. Good job. And back. Four and back. Awesome, that's so great. Now, switch sides. So the other knee and the other arm. Ready? Got, the, got your hands at your waist, your fists at your waist. There you go. One and back. Squeeze that muscle and up. One and back. Bring the fist back to the waist. That was two, three and back. Bring the fist back. Four and back. Awesome. And you guys have done all the exercises already. Wasn't that wonderful? Do you feel better? Look there, you're getting applause. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. All right, well, we're going to be choosing our goals now. In choosing our goal, um, you're going to choose one step, choosing a goal, and sticking to it changes everything. So this week, we're going to choose one challenge that you can do for the next week from the three that you see listed. If you look on page 9 and 10 in your book, you'll see um, what we're talking about listed. So number one is you can choose to be more physically active. Number two, you can choose fewer sugary drinks. Or three, you can choose to keep a food journal. And then in step two, you're going to personalize your goal. Uh, be specific. <laughs> be specific about what you plan to do and how often you plan to do it. So this is where you own it. You make it your own. You make it work for you. So for instance, in goal number one, this is my goal from last week, and I'll be bringing that forward into this week. I will get at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise on five days. So that's 30 minutes for five days. That's my goal. That was for last week. And then the second, the number two is, I will choose to drink water or low-fat skim milk instead of sugary drinks on two days next week. So this is my goal for the coming up week. I'm honestly doing really good on this. So I think this is going to be an easy goal for me. Um, but... Uh, you guys will be able to choose whichever goal works for you. The third one is, I will track how much I ate on seven days next week. So when you're doing this, just know that you're getting very specific. You can't, if, if, it's, if it's a goal that's very vague, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna work up to running a marathon. Well, that isn't very specific, especially if you're someone like me who doesn't run a lot. So if you 
you might want to start out slowly on that and say, okay, well, what I want to do is eventually I know what I want to get to, but for now, I'm going to start out running 15 minutes for three days a week and then build upon that. Makes sense, doesn't it? Your goals need to be specific and they need to be realistic and achievable. If it, if it is something that, that you know that you can do, you want it to be 50% doable. You know, if you're not going to be confident that you can at least 50% do it, then I would change that goal. And then under step three, you're going to track that goal. That, I think that's the beauty of, of success with this. Not just being consistent with it, but, but having some, something help you be accountable to be consistent with it. So track the goal. Use the space below to write the minutes of physical activity you completed each day. Use the following pages for recording your food and beverage intake. So you'll see on this page, there's a little uh, diagram of blocks where you can write the information in so you can keep up with it every day. So I would just pick a time, like if you exercise in the morning, right after you exercise, write it down. Be proud of yourself. And later on in the day, if you have to do something else, then you can add to it, but at least you'll have it down. Because in the busyness of life, you can lose track of what and when, right? So in, and then just below that, there's a little box for notes. So basically, something that you, um, something that you, on what you want to note is how you're doing, any suggestions, challenges, or experiences when working on your goal. So that might be uh, something you might want to talk about next week. And then in step four, you're going to keep working on these goals and bring in an item that represents a time that you and your family made a healthier choice than normal. And this can be a photo, a food label, or a container. And come ready to share that photo, food label, container, and how you did with your goal. Because we want to know about all that. We love what we do, and we just love it when we see that it's really making a difference in your life. And then if you flip over to the next page, you're going to see that the there's a food diary area in there for you to be able to write down the foods that you eat this coming week. It's a great little booklet, isn't it? Okay. Well, I have to say, great work to all of you. You did so good on your exercises, and now you've got your goal. Um, and when you're, just, just to sort of reiterate about the goal, um, in step one, you put a check by the one you're willing to do this week and add this to your goal from the last class. Now you have two goals. In step two, you're gonna personalize that goal to make it work for your life. And I would like to know if there's anybody out there who would like to share, maybe you wanna, I mean, I shared my goals. Maybe you wanna share your goals with the class. Well, thank you so much for sharing. That's awesome. And I, I, I speak for myself, but I know that it's encouraging to us. I'm assuming it's encouraging to everybody else to hear that this is really making a difference in your life. That's what we're here for. Well, now it's time for our recipe demonstration portion of our presentation. Today, I'm going to demonstrate two recipes for you. And the first one is called Greens with Beans. This recipe highlights the cooking method of stir frying. And we've taken a healthy twist on a Southern classic with this. You're going to love it. The recipe is in your booklet on page seven, so you can follow along with me. And the other recipe that we'll be doing is stir fry cabbage. And that recipe card is in your booklet as well. So please look over the recipes to see if you have any food allergies to any of the ingredients. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my apron and put it on and put on my gloves and then I'm going to show you the product that will go into both of these recipes. And while I'm doing that, maybe you guys, y'all could let me know um, our, our collars and cabbage dishes that your family enjoys. And if so, how do you prepare them? What's your favorite way to prepare them? Okay, most people are pretty traditional with their collars and cabbages. It's a pretty standard fare. You're going to make coleslaw or you're going to cook it and it's just kind of 
your normal stovetop method. Did, did I get that right? Okay. Well, for for our presentation today, we're going to be highlighting a method called stir frying. And when we think of stir frying, generally I'm thinking of I'm eating out. I personally at one time didn't stir fry much at my home, but I have learned how easy it is and it doesn't heat your kitchen up. It's a wonderful thing. So for this recipe, for this uh, the recipe with the collards, the greens and beans, you're going to use um, two pounds of fresh collards, and these have been sliced very thinly. Uh, three tablespoons of olive oil, or you can use vegetable oil if you prefer. A medium onion, chopped. Two cloves or one teaspoon of garlic. And this is minced garlic. A half a cup of chicken broth. One can, it's a 15.5 ounce can of white beans. And some vinegar. It's two to four tablespoons, but this will be to taste. And the other recipe, I'm going to break down and show you what goes in it. It uses one small head of cabbage. Isn't that pretty? And if you'd like, um, and I really like it, so we're, we're going to add it today, you can add bell pepper. And this bell pepper, you can add however much you like of it. But isn't that pretty? We're going to add that. And we grew most of that here in our extension garden. Our agricultural and natural resources has a master gardener program, which is awesome. And this is an onion that also goes in here. And it doesn't specify how much onion, so you can kind of use how much to taste for yourself. And I used a red onion, just again, for more color. Also included in the recipe is one tablespoon of oil. I'm using the olive oil, as we did in the other recipe. And then uh, this is garlic powder. And for this, it's a half teaspoon, a third a cup of water, half teaspoon of salt, and then black pepper, just a fourth of a teaspoon. All right, so I'm gonna get these going. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put the oil in the skillet. Well, that's already good and hot. So we have the oil in, so I'm gonna go ahead And add the onion. It's one of my favorite things about cooking is when it first starts to sizzle. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit. You can find chopped onions in the freezer section, but it's just a time saver if you prefer that. Onions take just a few minutes to lightly brown. I want to mention while they're browning, one more thing about, about added sugars. Um, and that one thing is money. We're all interested in saving money, right? And we want to have more of that. Well, by simply buying fewer sugar-sweetened beverages, you can save money. And that money, you know, it can really add up fast. So just imagine every day that you had a soda, and that soda was a dollar and twenty cents. Well, in a year, you could save almost $450 by not buying that daily soda. Small changes can equal big effects, can't they? All right. So my onions are ready. I'm going to go ahead and add the broth. And the garlic. Let that get good and warm. It's always best to choose fresh garlic cloves when you can. And once all of the greens are in this pan, then I'm going to show you how to cut up a fresh garlic clove. 
it's really easy when you're cooking for to have one of the little pieces of garlic overcook. And, it, and you can avoid this by adding the broth when you add the garlic. A lot of recipes use both onions and garlic and they call for them uh, to go in the pan at the same time. However, they actually have different cooking needs. Onion needs to cook longer than the garlic does. All right, now that's good and warm. So I'm gonna begin adding these collard greens by handfuls. Aren't these a pretty green, just a delicious, nutritious, healthy looking color? I'm stir frying these greens. The term stir frying means to cook food quickly by cutting it into small pieces and stirring it, stirring it and stirring it constantly over high heat. You wouldn't imagine all of these would fit into one pan, would you? warming up over here. We are about ready to do our cabbage. There we go. Sit here for later. Corey's going to assist me and take this tray. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. All right. Now I'm going to get these. Stir in here a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead while that's cooking down. Put the oil in the pan for the cabbage. It's only one tablespoon of oil. Right. And so I have another big bowl here. And in this big bowl, I'm going to combine cabbage. Beautiful peppers. And the red onion. And toss them around and get them all mixed up. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So it's nice and hot and our bowl is ready. Add this. And we're going to come back to the demonstration I was talking about in just a second. I just want to get these started cooking. Thank you, Tori. All right, we're going to get this started cooking. Isn't that pretty and colorful? Let me move it down just a little bit. Let me stir these collars again. This cooking method of stir frying is great for retaining more nutrients than boiling uh, for a longer period of time. And we want our food to look good and taste good. But that nutrition, we want that, right? We want to be strong and healthy. Now I have two demonstrations for you. One is for the garlic. 
very chill here. I'm going to do our mini segment. One is for the garlic and one is for collard leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and do the collard leaves first. So this is what a collard leaf looks like if you're not familiar with it. I, we talk to a lot of people and some people say they've never had collards in their lives. So, you know, everybody's uh, family culture is different, but this is what you want to avoid. In a dish that's cooking quickly like this, big stem pieces uh, would not cook as quickly as you need. You want your all of the ingredients in your pan to, to cook evenly. And that being said, when you do the, uh, the the cabbage, if you're like I added bell peppers today, but let's say that you maybe you didn't have any bell peppers, but you had some um, what's a good vegetable? Maybe a maybe a good yellow squash would be a delicious vegetable to add. So you could take that and um, slice it thinly. You would want to slice it or either chop it in small pieces and pop it in the pot. Or maybe you have neither. You could just do the cabbage by itself. I'm going to make it myself one day and shred some, like I, I like carrots. I think that would add some beautiful color to the dish. So when I make it, I'm going to do like little shredded pieces of carrot in here. I think that would add a lot of color to it. My little grandchildren like carrots, so that's a, that's a good thing. I have a little garden, and they help me with it. And I'm trying to teach them uh, like how to take good care of themselves. I didn't know as much as I know now when I had my children. They were young. So... I'm trying now to kind of teach it in reverse. So this is what you do. Once you get all your stems off, you roll this cabbage up as tight as you can get it, and then you make really fine, small little cuts, being very careful to keep your fingers away from the knife. Because when you're stir frying, it's really important to have those small, thin pieces, whatever you're cooking. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that make won't that make a beautiful dish? Since we've already started this one, we're just going to tuck this down. And I'm going to, thank you, Lori. All right. Now, this is the garlic hello. And before I show you what to do with it, I'm going to double check because we need to keep stirring these. I'm going to flip them over. Make sure everything gets cooked evenly. And ideally, you would be constantly stirring this. Um, because I'm doing two recipes, it's a little bit of a challenge to do that today, but you'll, you'll get the idea for both recipes. All right, so this is a clove of garlic. And what it, I don't know if you can see it or not, it has these little papery looking stems on it. And it, it's like a lot of little cloves hooked together. So what we want to do is either you can just pop off a clove to use, which is I'm gonna do, what I'm going to do, or you can just take the whole thing and hit it with a knife, and that's going to help break it up. But if you take this little clove of garlic, turn the knife blade away from you, and hit it with the heel of your hand like that, It'll help you in peeling it uh, to be able to get the, the little skin part off of it. I'm going to do that again. There, there you go. It makes it so much easier. See, the skin just pops off when you do that. And then you can, to help yourself along, you can do that again once you get the skin off. And then you take your hand and put it on the dull part of the knife on the top. Put the blade down, and then you just chop, 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 chop. And you can do this however finely you want it for the dish that you're preparing. Isn't that so easy? And you have fresh garlic. All right. 
Fresh garlic, and we've learned how to to cut up collars in fine, fine strips. Now, when you're when you're stirring, these greens should be soft, but the goal is for them to maintain their bright color. So, the longer you leave the lid off, the better the, the, the brightness will be. And if you prefer softer greens, just put the lid on and steam it a little longer. And for today's presentation, I'm going to do that now. Let it down and let it steam for just a little bit while we finish up this other recipe. All right. So cabbage is a great vegetable. It's inexpensive and it's generally readily available all year long. So we added the oil to the skillet earlier. And we talked about how great the, the method of stir frying is. And the thing is, you, you can cook more things than just cabbage or collard. When I was a uh, in my, I'm going to call it my other life. <laughs> I used to do things the hard way and I would cook such big meals and try to do everything just as so. And you know what? I, I wish now that I had cooked quicker meals and spent more time playing with my children. So this is a quick way to get more vegetables on the table. So now I'm going to add the garlic powder and the water. Thank you, Tori. And get that stirred up really good. Mmm, that looks so good. And I wish you could be here to smell it because it smells delicious. Let that cook just a little bit. And while that's cooking, I'm going to come over here. Set my lid over to the side. And now, because the cabbage was cut so thinly, the cooking time on it is going to be quick. Um, and, and while it's cooking, you know, sometimes we get asked, what is the best type of cooking oil? And the American Heart Association recommends choosing non-tropical oils that are liquid at room temperature. And those can be oils like canola, corn, olive, which is what we use today, peanut, safflower, soybean, or sunflower. But the best thing you can do with your oil is always use a measuring spoon. The best way to save on fats and calories regardless of the type of oil you use. All right, so we've got our salt and pepper in. We're good. Now, if you're if you're cooking this cabbage and you think maybe you want to add just a little more kick to it, you could add some red pepper or you could add Tabasco sauce or cayenne, whatever you like, and make it your own dish. So this stir frying method is super quick and easy. Give it another good stir. Oh, everything's cooking down nicely. Now, I want to check on these collards. I'm going to cut them up just a little bit again. They're cooking so nicely. And then we're going to add to this our white beans. And the white beans are our protein for this dish. You could serve this dish over brown rice, serve a piece of cornbread, or um, maybe put a glass of milk with it. And this would be a heart-healthy, delicious meal. And our last ingredient to our beans with greens is vinegar. We use vinegar because it helps cut the bitterness in the collard. 
and we're using four tablespoons, but you can add more or less depending on how you like yours. I'm going to put that in there now. Let that cook. Really, the beans are already cooked. They're just warming up. And these beans today, um, when I we went to the grocery store to get low salt beans, we couldn't find them. So what we did was we put the beans in a colander and sink, and we rinsed them under water and washed all that salt off of them. So that that's an idea for you if you can't find the product you're looking for in low salt. And let those cook for just a minute. Now I'm going to add the salt and the pepper to our cabbage and give that a good stir. Let's put this over here. We're just about finished. Aren't these beautiful? Such a pretty dish to set out for your family. Filled with good nutrition. All right. So we're ready now to plate it up. So I'm going to use these two bowls first. We're making a pretty little plate setting over here, just like we have with if we were inviting you to lunch at our house, set a pretty place for you. And at that pretty place, while I'm plating this up, you will notice that there's a water bottle like the one you received. And inside it, it has my new secret recipe. And I'm going to share that with you. It's very simple. It was just water and ice and a, a sprig of rosemary from the garden here at, the, at Extension. Just maybe a couple inches of it, depending on what, how you like the taste and some sliced lemon. Isn't that beautiful? And I have to tell you, I, I just loved it. It was a, I didn't know how it would turn out. It was a really pleasant surprise. And like I said, I told my son, this is great. I, I mean, I would buy this, it's so good. So if you try it, you'll have to let us know what you think. And if you have water recipes that you want to share with us, we're always wanting to learn new things. You know, I, I didn't know how good those two ingredients would pair until I tried it. So if you try something, or there are a lot of water recipes out there, if you try one and you really like it, let us know. We're always looking for a new good recipe. That's what friends do, they share, right? Tell you also while I'm plating this up, we look so forward to this time with y'all every week. It's exciting for us, you know, when we see you achieving your goals and trying or encouraging each other, and, and by all that, you're encouraging us. You know, we, we do what we do because we care about you, and we want your we want you to be to, have, to live your best life, you know, and good nutrition is a big part of that. I'm going to move these things out of the way. And then we're going to check for just a few more minutes before we're finished for the day. <clears throat> Isn't that beautiful? Look how pretty that is. I do wish you were here where you could eat it. It actually smells like my grandmother's house in here, only this is a much more nutritious meal. So of everything that we have talked about today, what do you think is the biggest take home point of this whole lesson? Right, cut back on sugar sweetened beverages, that's right. So in your booklet, starting on page 14, and it looks like it's, it's this page looks like this. So starting on page 14, there's a list of common questions and answers people have about sugar. So you may have to come up with some questions while we were chatting today. If people want to know about sugar sweetened beverages, um, there's other information in there also on different sweeteners, on fruit juice. 
be sure to check it out later. Next week, we're going to talk about making small changes for big effects. Between now and then, you can keep, use, keep working on your goals, keep using your food and your activity journal, and choose an item that represents the time when you and your family made a healthier choice than normal. And there again, it can be a, a photo, a food label, or a container. And come ready to share those photos, food labels, and containers so that we can all know how you're doing on your goal. Before we finish up, we really do care about what you think, and your feedback is important to us. And your classes, your feedback makes our classes better for other people. Be honest about how you feel. We really do need to hear it. You're going to receive a Qualtrics survey in your email again this week. It takes about two minutes to complete it. Our gift for you this week is the water bottle. Use it to increase your water intake. Water is sugar free and it quenches your thirst better than any sugar sweetened beverage. And you can do like this, add some fruit. Some people like cucumbers, mint leaves, any herb that you like. And if you come up with a new flavor, like we said, be sure and let us know. I want to thank you so much for allowing us to, be, to spend this time with you and to walk along with you on this part of your health journey. We're going to be looking forward to seeing you next week. It'll be next Thursday at 2 o'clock on September the 17th. You have a great week, and we'll see you then.